So I have here with me my good friend Ivan Shellam, who, for those of you who don't know him, he founded the surfing community in Oslo, in Norway, which is one of the most vibrant communities in the world. And we've had an awesome friendship and uh, working relationship together over the years. And there's massive crossovers between our work and Ivan now has really kind of packaged his work together into Reclaim Your Inner Throne online three-month training. And we're just going to talk about that a little bit because I think for it's for men. And I just think a lot of the men who have come across surfing and experienced myself and Sean's work, I think could really benefit from, from what you're doing. So I'd like to grill you a little bit over it yeah. and ex just explore like really what, what goes on for men on this three month journey. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to know? Well, what, what I really like about your stuff is how it's similar to our six month training. Like the backbone of it is mythology. It seems. Yeah, totally mythology archetypes and um yeah really going on a journey that is challenging in order to 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 make a real difference in our lives and not just like a mood making or a like a sweet experience that we get to share but actually real breakthroughs right which requires a real struggle <laughs> right yeah and what i like about you and the impression that I get. So, you know, this idea of addictions. Yeah. My sense that on this course, you are pretty ruthless with getting people to face their addictions and to face the things which are the psychological things that are underpinning their addictions. Yeah, that's, and, that's right. And there's, there's something about, I would recommend this course for people who are like, they really want to shake they shake up. They know that there's something. They know that they're not performing how they really want to in their life on the deepest level. They know the stuff that they want to face. Mm. And I, I get a sense that this three months is just like there's going to be high levels of accountability, how high, high levels of support, mm. high levels of feedback for men who really want to dive deeper into their purpose. You know what's holding them back. And yeah, I think what. Um what most of the men who go on this journey get to experience is really how committed they are to staying small and staying in denial of what truly lives in them. And, um, and the way that normally expresses itself in us as human beings in general is by distracting ourselves from the pain which we are required to feel in order to step into our greatness. So there, we have, we have these uh, diversionary tactics in, inside of us, and and the reason why I built it is because I I I've seen how strong this is in me, and I've struggled with addiction in some way for like most of my life, computer games in my twenties or whatever, and um, yeah social media, checking email. Now that I'm running my business, you know, I want to see who has been, you know, coming into the business lately and that becomes an addiction. And we do that. You know, I can I can say that with confidence that we do that as human beings because I see this consistently with the guys. You know, they come on, they're severely addicted. They didn't even know how addicted they were because in their view, addiction was like, heroin or nicotine or whatever but then all of a sudden they realize it's all those little ways in which they might communicate slightly inauthentically in order not to feel intensity in their body or the way that they may have their mobile phone next to them in bed because you know maybe something is coming in a message or whatever so they're always on alert or you know whatever it might be there are all these these ways that most people don't realize are addictions and then all of a sudden they're like holy shit 
was like 90% of my day is spent in addictive patterns. Right. I mean, I remember it was about three years ago when I just suddenly got this kind of door. It dawned on me like about presence and really what that was and how, you know, I would just in the evenings, I'd just go and I'd have dried mango in my cupboard. Yeah. And it's not as if like it's a, a bad addiction. It's not as if like it's, it's damaging me dried mango. But what I started to notice was rather than face the feelings that I had after my day's work and the stresses, I would just go to the cupboard and eat dried mango. Mm. And that was like just a subtle addiction, basically. And it's not that I'm addicted to dried mango, but it's that movement away from really facing what's going on on a deep embodied level. Yeah. And it's like that commitment to really face myself. I see that as such a, such a fundamental key to then everything that's opened up for me in these last years mm-hmm. because my life now is it's an absolute dream compared to where I was in terms of what you know my career and the travel and the work and bringing the stuff I'm passionate about mm-hmm. and it was having to face like despair it was the dried anger, mango <laughs> that disgust yeah, you back. Of dried yeah. mango <laughs> like, yeah. really facing like the the disgust that I had about my current situation and the anger and how trapped I felt in that current job and all of those things. And mm. it's some, something that me and Sean in our work, are, we're so onto it with addictions, but I just get a sense that your program, and that's just one of the things that if guys like are inspired by that, they, if that resonates with them, like this is a three month yeah. program where they can come in. It's just a part of it. And I'd like to give a little bit more context archetypally for what this actually is. And right. before I do that, you know, I, I, I'd like to say that it feels good to hear about your dried mango because one of my big things has been like, I have this drawer in my kitchen where I have like nuts and raisins and shit like that. And, and I found myself, frequently just waking up to the moment in the middle of reaching for something it's like how did I end up here yeah and it's like it's like I'm being taken I'm just all of a sudden something walks me to the drawer and has me uh-huh. eat and I'm not even present to it yeah it's, it's scary uh, uh, and in terms of magician um, or I mean addictions, um, so the way that uh, any initiation really is about um, being faced with all of those things that keep us small and in 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 pain and in trauma, you know. So there is a the, the whole purpose of initiation is is a process of being humbled to you know our deficient life strategies so that we can actually open up into more well-being wholeness uh, and uh, joy you know all all kinds of good things and and in traditional initiatory uh, rites of passage you know this used to be a very cruel violent process in many cultures so um, little boys would be sent into the wilderness you know uh, maybe dying, uh, uh, fighting a wild beast. They might get hung up, you know, with uh, in the middle of some sort of a ritual space with like skewered with the uh, skewered with spears and that kind of thing. And there are some stories, you know, from Native American tribes, African tribes that that seem pretty horrific. But but still, you know, th- there was an agreed upon. A sacred, uh, you know, purpose in that culture that unless these boys were taken through this experience, they wouldn't grow up as safe men in the tribe, and they wouldn't know how to, uh, you know, uh, protect the tribe. There wouldn't be a uh, a force for good. They might be one of those dangerous, you know, on the fringe kind of people that would have to be sent into exile or something like that. Yeah. And obviously, uh, uh, we don't do that today, and I, uh, I, I, I would never think about doing anything like that. But what what I see happening in our modern lives is that 
in all of these addictions, they become the means by which we uh, uh, avoid our trauma. You know, so I have all kinds of wounds and pain, right? And because it's too much for me to feel it, I put addiction on top of it. So I get to be numb to what's going on underneath that. Right. So and, and so I get to feel less pain, but I also lose track of my vision, my power, everything that's good. So basically, I'm just tuning down the felt senses of life itself, like on all uh, both sides of the spectrum. And what I found in this process and... Um, you know, exploring all kinds of work, you know, I've been doing these kinds of, uh, I did the No Woman Diet with the Offending Man program back in the days, and I felt how that was, you know, which is also addiction work. Uh, and then realizing, holy shit, there is so much life under here. And when I start taking away the addictions, the trauma gets to, to, to surface, you know, and I get to really face the demons that have been tormenting me for my whole life. And this is what I call in archetypal language in our, a magician initiation. So it's like Gandalf on the bridge facing the Balrog, right? And he yeah. like, you shall not pass, and you know you think he's won, but then the then the addiction comes back, right, and it pulls him down, and and there is there's something mythological in that theme that you know that Gandalf, in a way, he has to be defeated in order to be resurrected as Gandalf the White. And this is really at the core of the magician archetype, that in a way we have to die to our current selves and be resurrected. And the means by which we do that and reclaim your inner throne is, is really by going into the addiction work within a mythological archetypal context. And within an initiation context. Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. So this is like basically three weeks of the 12 are hardcore into this territory. But then the theme runs through the whole training. Mm. Yeah. I just I just really like this as a you know, thinking for people who have experienced circling and circling can be very, I mean, it depends on the variety of circling, but it can be very holding and people can be very held and seeing where they are. Yeah. And just this course is a, more on the uh, yang side, the masculine side of where, you know, it's it's that exactly thou shalt not pass. Yeah. And the bridge like that willpower, that strength, that presence to yeah. like, yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to tolerate this any longer. And together as a group of men, we're going to we're going to face this stuff together. Yeah. We're going to be ruthless with each other. We're going to support each other and we're going to achieve something. Yeah. And what I've experienced is so true. We say, you know, the brotherhood is, is key. And what I've experienced with past participants, especially one now in the last round, is when the trauma is huge, it gets real, really fucking rough when all of these uh, diversionary tactics are, you know, start you know, getting taken away. So it, it can get, like, chaotic. And then these men, they will really, um, you know, start feeling how they want to just disconnect. No, you're, you're abusing me, you know, you're not respecting me, la la la, this training is bullshit, I'm, I'm going, you know. And, um, and yeah, this, this kind of stuff happens. And, and that's, I know this happens in circling as well on your SAS training that, you know, we all, I'm, which I'm on currently on and I'm feeling the intensity of that, um, that there's a lot of stuff that comes up and it could, could get so intense that I want to disconnect from, from that energy, which has me feel all of those things. But what I like about your work and we, we do a similar thing in the SAS is that being held in that initiation context and with all the rich mythology which you bring in through the course it's like yeah it connects you to ancestors it connects you to different cultures it yes kind of frames what you're going through in a much wider significance yeah that is really inspiring like I've read quite a few of the texts that you give out and know a lot of the practices and like it's there's something I really like about that and the guys that have been through it like 
Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the way that you're all held in it together, it's it's something powerful. I can really feel that. I feel excited when you say it. It it feels important to me to add something about mythology because it directly addresses, you know, ancestry, feeling part of something bigger. Um, it seems to me that mythology has become synonymous with basically fairy tales. So, you know, this this it's is fun psychology. Pardon? Like, it's for me mythology, like the the good stuff. It's like some of the most advanced psychology out there. Yeah, yeah, and I think that the the, the big big uh, purpose that mythology used to serve was to be the glue that held the social order together in a way. The mythology initiated us all into one shared storyline. Right. And when you take mythology away from culture, not only do you get people who don't realize that what they're experiencing right now, this particular flavor of pain that feels so unique and that feels so like it's only me in the whole world that could possibly be feeling this kind of pain. All of a sudden we get that this is part of the human storyline as described in mythology and you're living out the journey that people have been li living out for millennia and all of a sudden you get to like like the loneliness while it still might be there all of a sudden it serves a purpose like right. loneliness becomes the the gateway to the human storyline that we all share and that that takes us somewhere it's it's not meaningless suffering if we get to be with it fully it's not meaningless suffering it takes us somewhere as described exactly. in mythology exactly and then it's the story that you it's the meaning that you put to your experience yeah it's the thing that matters yeah it's meaning making mythology is meaning making got a lot of energy around this <laughs> <laughs> It's so deep, like when I want to be able to put it across because it's like, yeah, there's mythology over there, and yeah, it's helpful, and there's, you know, like Jungian psychology used mythology a lot. And, but there's, there's, there's a way that I want to describe to people, like, how deep it goes. Yeah. Because it's like having studied ridiculous amounts of psychology and philosophy and spirituality and like knowing all the theories out there about psychological growth it's the thing that i come back to that most inspires me for myself and for my work with others is actually like shakespeare and and you know mythology like nice. all these different things it's like because there's so many hidden gems of of symbology and and um, yeah. just stuff that can actually guide us for what and how to make sense of what's happening i have the, i have it the same way uh yeah, and I have an idea about why it is like that for me. Um, I'd be curious if it's like that for you as well. It's like mythology, in a way, bypasses the normal circuitry of my intellect, intellectual analytical brain, and it hits something that feels like viscerally deeper in myself. It's like it speaks directly to my soul. Right. It's, it's already kind of been planted in us through all the stories that we've heard there's children like it's already all this symbology is kind of in there yeah and at the same time it's in these epic movies that repeatedly follow the same hero's quest yeah so it's like it's all around us well consider this right every time that i have like a breakthrough into what's clearly a more profound state of being like a higher stage of consciousness i i would assume that you know oh wow it's so new and it's so wow but actually it feels more like, no, I'm returning to something that's familiar. Exactly. You're coming home. I'm coming home. Yeah. And it's like the mythology exists more in that dimension of being, you know? <laughs> I'm getting shivers. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. I'm glad we share this, <laughs> this passion. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that for the guys who have been uncircling, 
and who have experienced a lot of archetypal dynamics, uh, certainly, you know, in uh, circling weekends. Um, I think going on the Reclaim Your Inner Throne training will give them uh, a layer of interpretive ability. They will be able to see exactly what's going on in, at a more profound level. I was just thinking that because um, a criticism we get sometimes of our work is that people will come on a circling weekend and they'll have they'll get blown open and they'll have these profound experiences and then it'll kind of crash back into normal life and the reason for that is when people aren't able to translate and interpret the experiences that they've had powerfully yeah. then they will get lost. Yeah. So it's that ability to interpret your experience is so critical if you want to integrate the, the magic of circling into your life. And mm. mythology is one of the different tools, probably the strongest of all the tools to help you to, yeah, to, to be able to understand and uh, kind of locate what experiences you've had yeah. in a way that then it's kind of, it can be held in your life. It's like contained and, you're still in it because it's ongoing and then you can relate your experiences in work, for example, yeah. to something in the mythology and yeah, to the way it links it. <laughs> and I think it also gives us the gift of a symbolic vision so that, you know, be it circling or reclaiming your inner throne, when we're more exposed to these archetypal mythological dynamics, and we get to be with them and start understanding them in that more of like contained space. We go out into the world and all of a sudden we realize that, you know, that I have developed a new kind of seeing. Like yeah. things that are happening around me are not just like just impulses to, to my senses anymore. They actually now we have this meaning making layer that has the mundane take on the quality of something that's pretty fucking profound you know exactly yeah yeah it's not it's not just some idea it's like what was mundane suddenly can be seen as like completely alive yeah like what the fuck mysterious <laughs> like oh my god it's like dungeons and dragons <laughs> On underneath this, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that that gives hopefully gives guys a good idea of what they would be getting into with your course, and yeah. uh, well, I'm just happy to happy to spread to to inform people about this about your work, and great to explore these common themes, which. So, like, through our six-month training, this is because then it's more about integrating into your life. Like, this is where we bring in more and more of these interpretive frameworks a lot through mythology. Yeah. And it's good just to speak about that and for, to share our passion around that because it's it can sometimes be lost when we're just in these experiences together of profound nature. But if you really want to live it powerfully in your life, then you have to go deep into the interpretation and deep into the mythology and understanding of, of what goes on. Yeah, I believe that to be true. For me, it's just exciting to to be um, in a new kind of dialogue with you guys, you, John and Sean, you know, and, and realizing how much overlap there is. I mean, I've, I've been doing a lot of circling and I love what you guys are doing and and it just seems to me that there's such a mutuality between like mutually supporting bodies of work yeah. and um, feels very abundant this idea that people who come and reclaim your inner throne can come into the SAS training and people who have been on the SAS, SAS training can come into come into reclaim your inner throne and it's like I feel uh, a desire to add one more piece at the end. Like just like the SAS training, reclaim your inner throne. It happens online in your day-to-day -day experience. You know, so it gets to be integrated week by week. And I think this is one of those important things that 
the that trainings that are ongoing like that get to um you know they 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 um they have us experience things that an isolated weekend experience can't ever do because the, the space is so held and we're so protected by uh, like a shared understanding that in a way it is a little artificial and and it's not when you have this ongoing experience okay yeah, yeah. i felt a bit clumsy in, in saying those things but i think i managed to get it across well, I, know, I know what you mean it's that so for on our training the six month sas it's like every week you're going to be coming on skype and connecting with someone authentically on a deep level yeah and that could be you know you've just come out of work and you're stressed and like the last thing you want to do is really connect deeply yeah it's that commitment to to that truth and to that connection in everyday life rather than on that weekend high yeah it's such a key part of fully realizing your potential with this stuff yeah yeah, the process of integration is always the hardest for me, and I think it's for most people. Yeah, and this is I'm I'm just excited because I want I don't just want people to have that weekend. I want people to be able to bring this fully into their life. It's possible. I I know that I've done that through a lot of hard work and a lot of faith in the addictions has been a was been a big part of that. So to have people have a course like yours available, uh, as well as the stuff we're doing, it's just the more the better. The more options that are out there, the better to help people bring this because it, it's, it's, it's more important than the weekend experience. It's like, don't stop there. If you've tasted this, if you've tasted something that's profound where you felt liberated and you felt like, what you could do in life and what's possible in your connections, like don't stop there. Mm. This is the next stage, it's harder, but it's like that's where the real grit is and that's where the real challenges are, the, the real richness is. Mm. Should we wrap it there? Yeah, I think it's good. Hmm. Yeah, love feeling your commitment for that more holistic way. Yeah. 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 We could we could go on, I think, but it's 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 a good place to end. <laughs> so, for more information, look below. Go to inner-throne.com. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Cool. See you guys. All the best. See you.